Hello everybody and welcome to another knockoff review. Thanks to the guys over at TF Direct. In today's video we're taking a look at the first offering from Zeus Magic Toy. This is Guardian of the Universe. ZS01 Zeus the Great Alloy Version. Specification, colours, contents may vary from illustration. This uh, may or may not be uh, Black Mamba uh, or AI Mech as we know them, but it is of course based on Shockwave and his Dark of the Moon appearance. Absolutely massive box here with Shockwave on the front and spinning around the back we have him transformed up into his deadly assault tank vehicle mode. And here we have him out of his plastic prison and Shockwave is truly a gargantuan behemoth of a figure. Gorgeous colours on this guy. I'm hoping those are showing up well enough on camera because he is vibrant. The purples they've used are sublime. Got that big blade on his back arm there. He's got those thrusters on the back. You see the treads painted down the back of those legs going around to this mighty huge chain gun style cannon sporting a red LED light on the inside as to does that sublime head sculpt that they've put on there as well. I've been messing around with this guy all day and he is by far my favorite figure that uh, Black Mamba, AI Mech or Zeus toys have done. He is lovely. Just getting up close and personal. Got that red LED light. And obviously it's not essential to have that on. We can just turn that off. But the sculpt on this is gorgeous. Obviously it's based on the Studio Series version. We have this massive great cannon arm. Again with the LED lights. It's got a button just up here. Push and turn that off. It's just something about the colours on Shockwave though. That I really do love got this battle worn kind of damage you've got the ability to move and maneuver the hose as you see fit obviously you don't have to have the blade on his arm that is completely optional really really tight joints on here I will warn you now there's some notorious areas that people are warning others to steer clear of uh, mainly revolving around these hips and the legs. I'm not sure whether this is the second version or the first version of the mold, but there was problems with these legs. They were done too tight. I think the screw that was provided was too long and they were breaking off and shearing off. Uh, if yours are incredibly tight around this area, bear that in mind. Maybe just take the legs apart slightly and unscrew, I believe it is, uh, the section just on the inside of this tab piece here. I believe it's this screw here. Just unscrew that a fraction and hopefully that should rectify any faults. But I absolutely adore how he looks. It's just something about the paint applications. They've really done an outstanding job. Now, obviously, I don't have a giant sized Dark of the Moon Megatron yet. I think that's still in the works from various different companies, but size-wise, I don't think he's that bad. Considering that the Revenge of the Fallen Megatron is kind of bodged out of different bots, and then we've got the original 07 Megatron there, kind of towering a good inch or so taller than Shockwave. I believe Shockwave was around the 31, 32 feet mark. Megatron was between like 33 and 35, I think. So that doesn't look too bad in my opinion. Starscreen's probably way too small. Uh, again, he would probably be a lot taller, but this guy definitely has that shelf presence. I mean, the gun on his arm is insane. It's just absolutely <laughs> mind-bogglingly big. It's gigantic. Again, I may be on my own here, but personally, I think he scales better with the Wei Zhang version of Prime than he does with the Black Mamba version. Uh, I think Prime's meant to be 28 feet. Make it that what you will. I think they both look good, but I kind of think that that Wei Zhang version kind of looks a little bit more like I was expecting. 
And for those of you that just have the uh, original, that's the repaint, but it's the same mold. So again, Shockwave kind of really towers over the MPM line. Now, as gorgeous as he looks, he's not without his faults. So his legs could really be doing, do being stiffer at the ankle joint. He does tend to tilt forwards because of this uh, large gun piece. that's very, very kind of front heavy. You also have to bear in mind that these pieces here are solid plastic. If you bring this up at the wrong angle and push, you will snap these off. So you have to kind of rotate it around. So you're quite limited as to where this gun can point. I mean, if we lean him back slightly on those legs, tilt him at the crotch, then we're probably okay to position that gun pretty far out. But uh, he does come jam-packed with a lot of articulation, so it's a matter of kind of maneuvering him and getting it to work. The head can roll quite nicely there, lots of range, can tilt quizzically side to side. We do get a lovely shoulder ratchet there. And up and down. Really nice bend on the elbow, rotation at the elbow as well. We get these really nice fist on Shockwave, really huge amount of detail, kind of no expenses spared there on all of these fingers. Really love how they come out. I assume that Siege Shockwave was kind of a remold of Megatron because these seem to share a lot of the same kind of parts and transformation. Now there's no waist rotation in there, but we do get leg motion forwards. Could do with having a little bit more strength in that ratchet there, it comes all the way back. Out to the side, look at the weight of those legs, but, oh, just look at all of that detail. You've got these blades on these feet as well. They come forwards, and so we've got range forwards and backwards. The heel spur does hinder that backwards motion quite substantially, though, so we have to bring that kind of all the way back, and we get enough range in there, but it's not... Perfect, and we get a really nice ankle pivot in there as well. To get a really kind of fresh dynamic range on a guy this big, it's exactly that, it's very refreshing. Uh, he really does have an amazing shelf presence. I haven't kind of gushed over a movie verse figure for a long time. Uh, Shockwave really does tick all of my boxes. He's definitely my favorite that they've done thus far. I was almost contemplating getting rid of my Bayverse collection. Uh, but this guy's really kind of revitalized my love for the franchise of toys. Now, as amazing as he looks, it would be illogical to keep him in his robot mode without showing you the transformation to his vehicle. So let's just uh, start off by untabbing these chest panels. They tab in just either side of those shoulder blades. So just untab that. This is then going to rock back on that hinge. See the hinge drop down, that rocks back nicely. And as previously mentioned, we're gonna look at these legs. They're just gonna unpop from those waist sections and come down, unpop that from that waist. I mean, they do peg in there remarkably tight. If you have any fear that you're gonna cause damage or if it just will not shift, apply a little bit of heat from a hairdryer, not a lot, just enough to supple the plastic up slightly and then try and work it out. And hopefully that should aid you. These feet sections, uh, this piece here that we use for the heel spur, that's going to come down and rock around. This is going to lift up and extend outwards like so. And then with these legs straight, they are going to rotate around. And you're going to come and look here, and there's this tab just up by the top. This is just going to come in and tab into position. I'm going to apply a little bit of force to get that in there. And Shockwave's head is just going to kind of come forwards and sit at that kind of angle, like so. And then that's going to sit either side of his face. So at this point in time, we have a very kind of Megatron-esque looking tank construction. And coming in from a slightly different angle here to hopefully help you all see how we're going to bring these arms in and they're going to fit into this uh, retaining slot here. So straighten them both up, bring them in, and those are going to fit in together. So I'm going to give those a little push, make sure that they're both 
square. And then this section here is now gonna come up and over, and that's just gonna push and tab and lock in to the tops of those arms. From this position, I've just rotated the arm here so the cable is on the outside. Makes my life a lot easier. You're then gonna rock this joint back and there's a circle tab here. That's gonna line up with the peg here. So just try and line that up and get it all on camera, Ben. There we go. So that's now in there. Just make sure that the cable is clear. And then these are gonna come down. And I don't know if you can see here, there's these tabs just underneath. These are gonna line up with the ones on the crotch. We need to just make sure the hand is kind of up out of the way. Let's bring this one down first and then push and lock that one in. And again, on this side, let's bring that one down. And push and lock that into position. Boom! Then we have him transformed up into his kind of Cybertronian tank assault mode. Uh, very kind of similar to what we get, I guess, with Transformers Prime. A shockwave turned into some sort of kind of tank thing there. This is very much like Megatron, but at the end of the day, there's a lot kind of less going on with him and it's a much easier figure to transform. I like the fact we can move those thrusters around on the back. I like the fact we've got this big chain piece coming around as well with all of those links of articulation. My legs were fine on mine. Again, please bear that in mind though, just be careful. And overall, this still stands to be one of my favorite figures from the Bayverse. Uh, yes, it's an oversized, yes, it's a knockoff, but my goodness me, does it work. What a sensational chunk of a bot. In terms of scale comparison, here he is alongside MP10. Here we have the Black Mamba version of Prime, and here we have the Weijiang Model Wizard version of Prime as well. So you can see that they actually look quite nice in scale together. Towers over the MP10. Not quite sure. I like how kind of off-center that is. Maybe I can bring that in a little bit more. I don't know. It's just not quite a central as I would have liked. But it's not the be-all and end-all, is it? Uh, very happy with that. Glad it's come out as nicely as it has. I'd like to thank TF Direct for getting this product shipped out to me. Shipping has been an absolute nightmare at the moment. I've got so many bits stuck in customs, en route, stuck in limbo as well, but uh, slowly coming through and slowly starting to pump out some of these reviews. A huge, huge, huge thank you to all of my team that support me over on Patreon. Without you, this channel would not be what it is. You guys really do make these reviews what they are. Uh, nothing really rolls too well. There are some wheels on the underside there, uh, but like I say, we've got the thrusters at the back. They twist and turn as you see fit. So as we can get some more of those unique toys, base pieces, we're gonna have a load of those come in and then Shockwave could possibly control that, but uh, it's pretty much what you would expect from the figure. I imagine this piece here was allows us to pop this out and switch it out for this hole. I'm not entirely, not entirely sure there. That may be an option, but uh, overall, very, very solid figure. Highly recommended. From myself and the rest of the collectibles household, thank you all for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>